What's up, Cal gang? All right, so we got the statics problem here. So our goal is to find the shear and moment diagrams for this beam. So on the beam, we have a distributed load, we have a force, and we have a moment, and then we also have two points. So I haven't finished this force body diagram yet. Let's do that right now. So A is a fixed point, so it's gonna have A of Y, and then A of X, and then B is a pin, or not a pin, it's a roller, so it's just B. Okay, so here's our finished force body diagram. Uh, we can go ahead and we want to find all of our unknowns before we try and do the uh, shear moment diagram. So let's do that first. So let's uh, let's start with A of X. So if we want to find A of X, it looks like we're going to take some of the forces in the X direction. We know it's equal to zero because we're in equilibrium. And A of X is the only thing that acts in the X direction. So A of X is equal to zero. So now let's take, uh, so now let's try to find another one. So if we take some of the forces in the y direction, we have two unknowns, so uh, that's not gonna help us. So we wanna try to get rid of one of them. And to do that, let's take the sum of the moments around A. So the sum of the moments around A is equal to zero, because we're equilibrium. So this 40 kilogram node is gonna make us wanna go clockwise, so we're gonna subtract the 40 kilonewton per meters, then multiply it by the eight meters that it is, and then multiply it by its center, which is four, which is, because it's four meters away from A, is where it's gonna act. So then we also have B. So B is pushing clockwise, or counterclockwise. So we're gonna add B, and then times its distance, which is eight meters. And then we also have this 20 kilonewton load, and that's making it wanna go clockwise. So we're gonna subtract 20, add it by its distance, which is 11. And then we also have the 150 kilonewton per meter load pushing clockwise, so we're gonna have to subtract 150. Yep. So then if you do the math on all this, you're gonna get that B is equal to 206.25 kilonewtons. Nice. So then all we have left is A of Y, so some of the forces in the Y direction is what we can choose. You can also take the moment around B. Whatever you wanna do, I like this the most. So of course A of Y minus the distributed load 40 kilonewton per meters times the eight meters, and then plus B, minus 20 for that guy. So you did the math on this and you're solving for A of Y this time, and you're gonna get that A of Y is equal to 133.75 kilonewtons. Okay, so now we have all of our unknowns, and now what's left is to do our force, or do shear diagrams. So let's go ahead and write the equations for this. So when you do this, you wanna write equations. So let's think about what we need to include in our shear and moment diagram. So we have uh, A and B. These are two points that adjust the load. So we're gonna have basically two points that we need to take consideration for. So that's gonna be before eight meters and after eight meters. So let's go ahead and write out our equations. So let's look at shear. So let's, what, let's see what happens if we were to take a cut of this beam. So here's A. Here's B, and then let's just say we take a cut anywhere here. So if we're to take a cut, shear always points, or shear does not always point downward, but if you take the cut on the right side, then shear is gonna point downward. And of course, moment always points from the bottom to the top when you take a cut, so it's moment like this. So these are the two things that we're trying to graph. So of course, we still have our distributed load, and then of course, we still have a of Y, and then B, and then so we're going to label this distance as X. It's basically how far from A have we gone. So we're taking our moment, or we're taking it around A. So let's draw, or let's write out our equations for this. So let's start with shear. So shear, right, so we're going to look at shear. So let's go with X is less than 8. So that means that we're before the second support B. So let's write an equation for what that would look like. So if we're doing shear, we're doing some of the forces in the Y direction. The sum of the forces in the Y direction is equal to, so we have A of Y is pointing upwards, and then we have this 40 kilonewton per meter load pointing downwards, so it's minus 40. But then we're not multiplying it by no distance, it's however far X that we've gone. So we're gonna have an X there. And then, um, 
So then, because we're before 8, this b is not yet in the equation. So we're, we're considering before this distance, like right around here. So then all that's left is our shear that points downward, so it's going to be minus b. Right? So now all you want to do is rearrange this equation to get b by itself. And of course, there's some of the forces in the y is equal to 0. So you're going to simply add b to the other side. And you get that b is equal to negative 40x plus a of y, which we know a of y is equal to 133.75. So this is equation one. Uh, this is what happens to the shear diagram before eight meters. So now we need to find out what happens after eight meters. So now we're at x is greater than eight. So let's do some of the forces in the y. Let's just uh, divide. So of course we still have a of y. We have minus the 40 distributed load, but we know that we're past eight meters, so we know this is gonna be eight because we've already crossed that eight meter mark. Then of course we have b of y now pushing upwards. And then we haven't quite reached any of these yet. So all that's left is negative b. Right. So, and then of course it's equal to zero. It's right equilibrium. So all you do is adding b to the other side, plug in a of y and plug in b, and you're gonna get that b is equal to 20. There you go. So now we have our two equations, and we just now have to graph this. So what happens, um, should we do, yeah, let's do this first. Let's graph it first. So let's draw a graph of this. So we're going to label this, and this. So this is distance x, and then this is v, which is shear in kilonewtons. So what we have to do is we have to graph this, of course. So what's the graph of this going to look like? Well, we're going to start at 133.75 when x is equal to 0. So we're now at 133.75. And then where are we going to end up, right? We're going to go to 8. And then we're going to go to 11. So we know from 8 to 11, we're at 20. So we can kind of just draw that in. This is 20. Right? 20. And then, so what happens in between? What happens from 0 to 8? Well, we have this thing where it goes down to negative 40 every x. So it's a linear line, so let's just see what happens if we plug in. So let's see what happens at 8, right? Because we know it's going from 0 to 8. So if we plug in v of 8, basically we're plugging in 8 for x, it's negative 40 times 8 plus 133.75. You're going to get that it's equal to uh, negative 186.25. So that means we're going to go all the way down to negative 186.25. Right? So it's going to go down, down like this. Then once it hits 8, it's going to hit that point, and then it's going to bounce back up, and then it's going to be 0. So this is kind of what our graph looks like. And this makes sense, right? So we're at 20 at the end, and then we, we always want to make sure we end up at 0. And that makes sense, because we have this 20 kilonewton load that's going to cancel out, and that's going to make us end at 0. So that's how you can kind of check your shear diagram and make sure you got it right. Cool, so that's what we got. So now we have to do our moment diagram. Whew. Okay, let's do the moment. How much time do I have? Oh, I have two minutes. Uh oh. Okay, so I have to do this in two minutes. So, so we're at x is less than eight. We have some of the moments around a because we're doing that again as equal to. So let's consider right. So we have this forty kilonewton load. So it's going to be machining clockwise. So negative forty times however far we are to get a total. Power, and then we need to do the um, the center of mass, which is going to be the distance divided by two because it's an equally distributed load. So it's going to be x divided by two. So then, because we're before eight, there's no b here, but we're going to still have our moment. So that we're going to have to add the moment. And then, is that it? Oh, and then of course we have our shear. So we cannot forget to add the shear. So the shear is negative. So it's going to be minus b times x. So we're looking at this here, right? This x, and then the v is going to be there, and the moment's going to be there. And it's all equal to zero. So then we're going to move the moment to the other side. So you're going to get moment is equal to, so it's going to be 20x squared. So that's going to become, and then this is going to become um, plus negative, because we're plugging in the equation we found for shear, negative 40 plus 133.75. And then this x is still there. So if you do the math on this, you get that uh, 
moment is equal to uh, negative 20x squared uh, plus 133.75x. Nice. So then after we pass 8, let's consider what happens after we pass 8. The sum of the moments around A is equal to, again, we're going to have that negative 40, but then we know it's already at 8, and then it's going to be at centered at 4. So then we're going to have B, right? So B pushes upward, so that's going to be a positive B. And then its distance is going to be 8. And then all we have left is the shear. So it's going to be minus V times its distance away. And then we're going to have to add our moment, plus moment. So then if you plug in the V here, which is just going to be 20, because this is what happens to the shear after it, you're going to get that uh, moment. And of course, this is equal to 0. So you're going to add moment or subtract moment to the other side and then plug in V. And you're going to end up with, after you simplify that, 20x minus 370. Cool. So now we have our two equations, and it's just down to drawing these. So let's get rid of everything I don't need. And let's draw this. So this is distance, this is moment in kilonewton meters. So we're starting with this equation until we get to 8, and then once we get to 8, we're going to use this equation. So starting here, we have, um, so you're going to need to use maybe a graphing calculator to do this, or use calculus. So you can just plug in 0 here, because we know we're starting at 0. Uh, so we know we're going to start at 0 if we plug in x is equal to 0, because then the moment's equal to 0. And then if you plug in x is equal to 8, like we did over here, you're going to find that at 8, we end up at negative 210. So we're going to end up at negative 210. And if you look at this, we have a negative 20 in front of our x squared, so it's going to be a decreasing kind of a parabola. So it's going to look something like this, is what's, what our graph is going to look like. And you can use calculus to find this high point or this intercept. Um, yeah, you can find the intercept by plugging this is equal to 0 and finding what value of x you get. So there's two ways to do that. So then we have this here, and then something happens. So the equation here now, if we plug in 8 for this, we get negative 20 times 8 minus 370. You find that we start at 220, which makes, or 210, which makes sense. So we're starting here, and if you plug in 11 for this, you get 370 minus 220, and we're going to end up at 150. So it's going to be minus 150. And that's where we're going to go here. And then it works out perfectly because we know that we have this 150 kilonewton meter load once we get to the end. So it's going to bounce us back up to zero. And that's good. That's how you know we got it right, because we ended up at zero at the end. So there you go. So that's how you solve this kind of problem. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. And I'll see you in the next video, guys. Peace.